Hi, everybody. It's yours truly, Music Loose here. Uh, and welcome to today's Afiva's Tavern. Uh, now, you're probably wondering why Laura isn't with me today. Well, one, in case you didn't see our previous video, which I will link above, um, t uh, she is currently away on vacation, so she has asked me to take over for this year, day, today's uh, Afiva's Tavern. Uh, we will be doing... Do, doing these again, I promise you, but we just haven't had a lot, enough time, uh, in, uh, in, uh, times, uh, so, yeah. Anyways, continuing on, uh, so, I'm gonna be doing it a little different this time, uh, as you may have already noticed on my screen, I have the release notes with me, um, this time we're gonna be looking at the release notes, because there's a couple big changes that, uh, this video in particular is not gonna go over, uh, I have already watched the upper video, uh, but I thought I'd go over it again, just for you guys. Uh, so, yeah. And the first time I did it, did it, I did previously record this, but no audio capture. So, yeah, that's kind of sucky. Uh, so I had to re-record it a second time. I had to re-record it a second time. Uh, but, yeah. So, I've always seen what this, the developer update entails. Uh, but, now that I have, I can actually go a little bit more in-depth about some of the stuff. It won't be first reaction, unfortunately, but that's what happens. Uh, so, yeah. So, first things first, we're going to watch the video, and then we're going to skip over to the patch notes that I have up here. And we will go over all the new information, uh, that they have for us. So, yeah. Alright. So, without further ado, uh, let's watch the video first. Hello, everyone. Joe Neat here, executive producer on Sea of Thieves, with another weekly demo update. First of all, I wanted to talk a little bit about our approach to updating the game uh, for this point onwards. So, over the last year or so, a year and a bit, um, we have very much been updating the game and adding kind of content in. We've done a, a, a ton of updates, you know, from starting with the Hungering Deep through the summer, through to kind of Shrouded Spoils, and then with the smaller updates leading up to uh, the, the anniversary update itself. And it was great because we were obviously constantly adding stuff to the game, and it was getting refreshed and, and richer. Uh, but what we weren't doing was getting into a kind of predictable cadence of updates, really. I think when we look at that, it was a bit sporadic, and there wasn't any real sense of what was coming next. So people could look and say, hey, Forsaken Shores is the next update, or Shrouded Spoils is, but, but once that had launched, there was no real kind of sense of when is something new going to be coming to the game, uh, when's kind of the next thing to look forward to. And so as we look to the kind of second year of Sea of Thieves, we very much want to get into this rhythm where people kind of understand the, the rhythm uh, that we're going to be updating the game in, uh, when there's kind of things to look forward to, uh, and really that it becomes much more predictable and kind of much more of a, a rhythmic service uh, of updating the game. So, with that. For those who don't know, uh, Sea of Thieves hasn't really released anything new since Amina the, earlier this year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Even though we need three, we ha have no si we've had a little silence, so. Uh, this is our, actually our first big update in quite some time, I so, and, and that's probably, and that's mainly why you haven't been seeing a lot of CFE's content. Me and Laura have been working behind the scenes on some stuff for SOT, as well as SC, uh, for those who don't know what that means, Silent Skull. So, yeah. Things have been quiet. <laughs> that doesn't mean we ha haven't forgotten about the game. Uh, regardless, though... Uh, this, uh, this update is very important because, uh, from this point forward, forward, uh, well, I'll let Joe say it, say it, but, uh, uh, there's going to be a change in how we cover the senior fees, and, um, obviously I'll go over this as well, uh, behind the scenes and stuff, but, yeah. Alright, All right, let's continue the video. That in mind, the, the update that's coming out today, which is Black Power Stashes, is the first of our monthly content updates. So from this point onwards, uh, we are moving to a rhythm of releasing and updating the game on a monthly cadence. Uh, and so for us, for each kind of monthly update, what you're going to see 
um, is you're going to see new voyages, you're going to see new rewards, you're going to see new quality of life updates, uh, which you'll see throughout this. When I get to the kind of Black Powder Sashes details, you'll see kind of stuff in all of those areas that we're bringing into to this update. Event. So, so every month you're going to be able to look forward to things like this. But also as we move forward, this is also going to be our kind of vehicle for delivering new things such as new tool tails or new features and mechanics or new updates to Arena, um, uh, obviously alongside uh, Adventure 2. So you know, this, is, this is the rhythm that we want to get into moving forward. So very much like right now it's about that kind of, it's a slight shift in terms of the process and in terms of how we work at uh, Rare. And so that's our focus right now. That's what we've been focusing on for Black Powder Stashes. It's what we're going to be, be focusing on for the next update, which will be coming in August. Um, but it's a, it's a big shift, but we think you know, it's something we've definitely heard from players in terms of you know, how, like, can we get into this more predictable thing? Can people kind of schedule their lives around, around Sea of Thieves or you know, um, schedule the rest of the stuff that they've got to do, uh, knowing when there's going to be new updates, when there's going to be new things coming to the game, um, and as, as opposed to the sporadic nature from before. So with Black Powder Sashes being the first of our monthly content updates that we're bringing to the game, I'll just talk through some other stuff that's coming with this. So the kind of main thing that's coming is this new set of voyages that Duke's going to Okay, so, um, yeah, so basically Rare is trying to get into a pattern of updating the game constantly each month. Uh, so that will, we're going to try to do that too. We can't make any one of the promises because we got to do this in Papa Simon's call and got guides, which we'll really want to do for the channel, so... Getting into that pattern will be hard to balance around our, our current schedule of, on top of already tons of video games and Nintendo and Sega and all that. 2019 seems to really hate, hate us. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a bad way, I mean game-wise it seems to really hate us. Uh, but that doesn't mean, me of course... Of course, see if he's, uh, uh, we're gonna neglect neither, neither Sonic isn't going anywhere for the game, Go Gamers, and neither Sea of Thieves. We're gonna try to balance both as much as we can. Can, that's the goal of the Go Gamers. We're all around gamers, we play all kinds of games, so, yeah, just so you guys know, know on that, just wanted to reassure you, show you that there'll be a slight shift in terms of content, so, yeah. But I do have a lot of stuff planned, like I said, this week. Um, I'm going to get about, about to it soon. I actually have a checklist I just showed Lola of what we're going to plan to do. Um, but yeah. Uh, anyways, getting back on topic with Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves, uh, definite, uh, def, definite, uh, look, definitely looking forward to this update. I'm going to try to cover it with even a guide on how to do these black powder... Ugh. Take sessions because these things seem to be very, very, very hard. And this is gonna involve forts. Forts, so yeah. Yeah, but I'll let Joe explain it a little bit, and then obviously we're gonna look at the release notes after this so you guys can understand what I mean by I'm gonna need a little help. But yeah, let's continue the video. Maybe delivering to players, and this is all gonna be about kind of sending you to forts around the world, collecting uh, different rewards, but really focused around gunpowder barrels and also stronghold barrels. Um, and as part of the kind of the lore and the story behind this, that, um, you know, everyone's looking to stockpile these gunpowder barrels across the world. And so you'll be able to cash these in uh, the Gold Hoarders, the Order of Souls, the Merchant Alliance, or if you're a pirate legend, you can cash them in kind of as part of the Athena Fortune trade. Um, so, you know, you can progress in the way that you want, but by taking part in um, uh, in these these voyages, there's also a lost shipment of mermaid gems, which you'll find around the world as well. So again, rewarding kind of exploration, um, but also giving you ways to, to level up again. The, the kind of choice uh, is yours, and so that's the kind of the new set of voyages. There's obviously there's a new set of rewards that come with them, so cosmetic rewards for taking part and re um, completing kind of numbers of the voyages. But we're hoping that this drives really interesting behaviour uh, in the world of adventure, just with the the kind of different social dynamics and the different kind of risk and stuff that this is going to put out there when you know, lots of people are going to be taken on these types of voyages. So you'll be encountering other players out on that, not knowing are they taking part in them or, or not, but also knowing that you know there's going to be quite a lot of um, explosive battles out there on the sea. So it should lead to some really interesting encounters between players. Alongside the new voyages from Duke, we've also made a big range of balancing kind of improvements to the game. So. I'll, I'll list these out because there's a lot of them. So, as I talked about last week, the Hunter's Call rewards have been rebalanced. Uh, 
Give me a second. Okay, so basically, um, um, we will be going over all these balancing change changes uh, when we get to the release notes once again. But um, uh, there are uh, quite a couple changes that have been needed since I would want to say around launch. But I'm not gonna knock there because they've been busy, and on top of that, that they did probably were busy talking to Nintendo about. Game Banjo Kazooie into Smash Brothers and Battletoad, so I'm not gonna not knock them too much, but still. Alongside that, Skeleton Lord difficulty, and so now for different sized crews, it's much more balanced. Um, the Curse Cannonball effects have been kind of rebalanced and reduced, both in terms of personal um, ones, but also ones that impact ships. Uh, the Megalodon's behavior has been changed and tuned as well, thinking about different sized ships and really kind of trying to accentuate the different Megalodon's kind of behaviors. Um, skeletons, so the Eye of Reach skeletons have been kind of... Uh, nerfed a little bit, cannon accuracy from, from skeletons too. Uh, the sloop masts are now quicker to raise after ship damage. Uh, mermaids have been kind of tuned as well, so they're actually more helpful um, and kind of behave a bit more in the ways that you'd, you'd hope and want when you're kind of you've accidentally falling off the ship. Um, um, but so lo loads of balancing improvements, even more than, than I've listed here, which you'll find at the build notes. Alongside those, we've also made a range of accessibility improvements. I'll call out a few of those highlights here, but there's been a real kind of passion project amongst some members of the team here to, to really try and take a look at our existing kind of um, UI and how people um, can kind of navigate things to make it more accessible to, to a, a wider range of people. So yeah, so there's, there's the option now to tap to kind of interact as opposed to hold um, and also being able to kind of toggle the radial menu up on screen and then toggle it off again as opposed to having to hold. There's also radial menu support for keyboard bindings. Uh, and again, there's a wide range of uh, accessibility improvements beyond just that. But again, there's, there's just people... Just so you know, guys, um, one thing I will do tonight, um, while I am done getting in once this video is officially up, I will be recording some guides to help you guide through the menus of where to turn on these options, and then I will showcase them in game, game so you guys can see what they're like. Like just so you guys know how to work these, work these, because I know for a fact that not everybody's going to be able to you, uh, going to be able to know what to do, and I do want to be able to at least get some small guides out before I can uh, tackle those big ones, of uh, that big uh, content update. Eight one with Ethan, if possible. Oh, and only me. I have a bad feel, feel feeling it's not gonna go well. Oh, just a feeling. But that doesn't mean I'm not gonna try. <laughs> Plus the team, we actually had a visit from Special Effect to a, a charity that we work closely with, and they, they kind of showed us uh, some of the uh, issues and stuff in terms of accessibility with Sea of Thieves. And so some of the team actually just went away, kind of off their own back, and made a, a range of improvements there, which is so cool to see, and so cool to see them all coming out in, uh, in this update. So again, check the, the build notes itself for the, the, for the range of accessibility improvements that you can see there. That's the kind of high-level summary of uh, everything that's gone into the Black Powder Sashes uh, content update. There is, there's a there's a ton more that you can see in the build notes in terms of bug fixes and just general improvements alongside uh, alongside what I talked about. But that's kind of what you can expect to see um, kind of with these monthly updates. So there's going to be voyages, there's new, there's rewards, cosmetics, kind of sales, big heads, etc. for taking part. But there's also going to be a range of quality of life improvements. And like I talked about before, as as we look forward, that's this is also how we're going to be delivering new tool tales and new features, new mechanics to enrich both adventure and arena. With Black Powder Slashes being our first of the monthly updates, the second one will be coming uh, on August the 14th, uh, and that will be called Dark Relics. So again... I'm not sure, sure, sure what he said, it said, it said, but something to do with relics. Let me turn up the vol volume just to be safe and see what he said. With Black Powder Slashes being our first of the monthly updates, the second one will be coming uh, on August the 14th, uh, and that will be called Dark Relics. So again, this is going to bring in new... I think you said Dark Relics. We'll have to wait wait and see what next, next note...
one what the next one is but uh this is the first of the monthly up updates as he said the next one is coming august 14th i wonder what that one's gonna be voyages that we're going to be trying to drive interesting social behavior between players alongside new rewards alongside quality of life improvements that come with us uh, we, we haven't got too much to share on that at the moment but we'll talk about that more in detail exactly what that is but yeah it's called dark relics and it's coming wednesday the 14th of august so that will be the next kind of monthly content update to look forward to and that will be really us getting into that rhythm of, of updating the game on a monthly basis now we really believe this is the right approach kind of looking forward and you know, getting into this regular rhythm, having always stuff to look forward to, always new things that are refreshing the game, delivering those kind of um, quality of life improvements and, and acting on top feedback points, and then like, and then how will we bring like new tool towers, new features, new stuff across both adventure and arena alongside that? Um, I think it's just going to be a really, I think it's a really good positive way to be updating the game. I think it's going to be um, just always something to look forward to, always something to kind of kind of bring you back to see a theme. So yeah, really believe in this approach. Um, absolutely I think it's the right plan it's something we've been working on the last couple of months and, and getting in place but really really looking forward to seeing how this rolls out and, um, and kind of how this impacts the next year of Sea of Thieves just moving on from content updates I wanted to talk a little bit about something that we announced very recently which was we are taking part in Twitch Rivals next week so we're going to be uh, on the 23rd and 24th of July uh, we're, we're kind of no, I'm going to have to look this up, guys, but Twitch Live, live well, sounds like something that a Twitch just announced recently, I think. Now, for those who probably know, though, because of the Prime, uh, Prime Day strike, I am not streaming on Twitch all week. All week. Week. But I am going to be start using the products again. Uh, again, like Alexa and all that. Oops. Okay. Gotta watch what I say. Uh, uh, just because, but just for support, part, part, I am not using Twitch at all this week. Week. So, you got one less customer on Amazon, sorry. Uh, I will, however, ever be definitely supporting everybody that does, uh, by watching your Twitch, Twitch, but I will not be streaming myself because I am not, I'm gonna, you know... Steve and take part on what's essentially a very, 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 very greedy company. But again, I'm getting a little off topic. So, uh, but yeah. So, um, this Twitch Rivals thing sounds interesting. Lord did say that if Twi if this gets big, big, it could be an esport. Uh, this is essentially uh, Microsoft's chance to make this an esport. So, I don't see why not. I mean, ever since Arena was announced, it had potential, but that's beside the point. Taking part in this Twitch Rivals event that we've been working with Twitch to kind of figure out and, and work out how to do for, for a little while now. But we've been, like, it's been great to work with Twitch. They've been a really great partner. Uh, and we're really looking forward to kind of having the Arena front and center as part of this Twitch Rivals event. I think it's going to be great to see the kind of competition play out. It's a nice long kind of extended um, kind of showcase of the arena on, on both the 23rd and 24th. There's going to be some great uh, streamers taking part in this, so it should be should be great for them to take part in and, and play in, but also great for us all to watch. So really looking forward to seeing kind of how that goes down and how people get on, and, and obviously uh, who wins will be, will be really interesting to see too. So yeah, so make sure you tune in, um, uh, like I, whether that's your kind of favorite streamer, and we, we haven't announced yet who's going to be taking part, but we will a little closer to the time who's going to be taking part in Twitch Rivals itself. But Obviously, you can watch on the, the Twitch Rivals channel, or you'll be able to watch um, one of, hopefully one of your favorite streamers that's, that's taking part in that. So yeah, it should be a really cool event, really great kind of showcase uh, of the arena, and yeah, just really excited about it. Uh, but I think that's it for me. So obviously, looking forward to questions or feedback on this new approach to updating the game. Um, but apart from that, I will see you in the seas. Cheers. And that is the CFE Ease Developer Update. However, we are now going to switch over to the release notes here. Oops. And take a look at uh, what they have announced. Now, they did have another video, but to avoid getting copyright striked, I, I will not be showing that video off. Uh, off just in case uh, Microsoft has put the music, uh, music because they have been releasing the tracks from the game. Yeah, Abe. Uh, inside of YouTube's copyright 
I stack library. Uh, and, uh, because I can't, can't replace any audio, uh, what, I can't replace audio in the new studio beta, thanks to the new, well, once, once YouTube, improvements, improvements to the copyright, and they did say there was more coming, so that's good. Uh, uh, I don't want to start with uh, Beavis Tavern. <laughs> Maybe a different video, but not this one. Uh, but I will... Well, I will be talking about uh, some of the information here. Now, I had to zoom out the page a little bit because I can't really see. Uh, if I zoom it in, then I can't really see see what the update brings. So, size and text is a little small, but I'll be reading all of this anyway. So, yeah. Mm -mm. So, first things first. The Reaper's Black Powder Runs. Duke is challenging the clues to face off against rivals in a new explosive Reaper's Run. The Reaper's Black Powder Run. These dangerous new voyages task crews of hop was hopping from fort to fort, finding gunpowder kegs, basically like you see in those cartoons, uh, buried merchant's chests, you guys know what those are, uh, and even stronghold kegs. Eggs. Probably larger black powder kegs. Uh, with two rounds to pick from, from clues should be able to keep, uh, should keep watch for rival clues as they tackle, track either the w east fort route run or the west fort line. Tackling these voyages with your Reaper's flag adds extra risk, but unlocks some unique rewards. These voyages can be repeated if you dare. Or, <clears throat> if you dare. Have to add a little extra effect. Okay, so that sounds very, very, very cool. Cool. So basically, uh, you'll have two choices of runs. You can either tackle the east side of the map for it, or the west side of the map for it. I'm not sure though if north, north, south, east, west. If the west side includes the new Devil War Fort, once that were added a couple updates ago, but um, we will have to wait and see. See, I'm more than fifty percent sure it is, but I could be wrong on that. So don't take my word. But it should be a little less dangerous, and we'll get to that a little later in the patch notes. Uh, so yeah. Now, for those who don't want to take on a full-on task like that, and are very, very touchy about forts, especially those, um, there is a better, uh, uh, different option for you. The Black Powder Smuggler Runs. For crews looking for a less competitive challenge with the same explosive consequences, Duke is offering a set, is offering a set of black powder smugglers runs, or voyages in this case. Uh, these new voyages take each crew's region of the sea to ca collect baby ocean chat crates, gunpowder pails, and even. Guaranteed! Hmm. I'm gonna hold my breath on that. Stronghold oh, kegs for the trading companies. Private legends have an exclusive voyage tasking them to venture into the Devil's War and blame the threats to reap even more stronghold kegs. These voyages can be repeated to your heart's content once completed. Interesting, interesting. So you have two options. If you're feeling adventurous, you can go for the Black Powder, uh, Reaper's Black Powder Run. If you're feeling sort of adventurous, but also also want to take a little bit more risk than usual, you can do the Smuggler's Runs. Um, for our guide, guides, we will be doing both, but I'll be attempting the Smuggler Runs first, first just to get warmed up, because that's a little less dangerous before tackling a Full on for it. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, we have go uh, uh, now we have tree company st uh, stockpiling 
um, the Gold Hoarders, the Order of Souls, and the Merchant uh, Alliance trading companies have been in stockpiling defenses and will now reward players for handing over gun powder barrels and stronghold kegs. So if you have a gun powder barrel or a stronghold keg, and you're already doing one of the three, whether you're hunting down some scales, uh, delivering merchandise, or or um, so, uh, turning your treasure chest, you can turn in your gun power barrels too. If you want to. Want to. Obviously, it's up to the player, player if they want to, but if you're low on gold and need them, I would advise it. Uh, and, and also, not wishing to be unprepared, the mysterious stranger has also began rewarding pirate legends with a Fina's fortune reputation for handing over stronghold kegs. So only stronghold kegs for pirate legends, unfortunately, but, hey, hey, the stronger the better, so that's fair. Now, Mermaid Gems, this is important. As you guys know, Mermaid Gems are very hard to find inside of CFEs, but I don't think they're going to be, be e for uh, this one. One, because uh, Duke has heard word that Mermaid ge uh, Gems have been, are being scattered across the world. They're washed up on all the islands, almost, uh, inside Skeleton Fort Vaults. Inside sunken shipwrecks, you know, those shipwrecks you see outside the world, 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 uh, those, oh, so where you can find some hidden treasure as well, so, pretty interesting. And even in the bellies of, K K uh, Cairns and Megalodons. Uh, I think I'll leave gems alone for that last one. I'm not willing to risk a shark bite. Sorry, guys. I know I'm sound chicken, but I'm chicken. <laughs> A little. Uh, uh, the train companies will be eager to take you take this off your goose hands. Hey, hey, good morning, Amelia. Okay, a range of mercenary co uh, mercenary cosmetics are available. For your crew's explosive efforts on seas, you can earn the blooms, unlock titles, and purchase newly available uh, ship parts, such as the Inevitable Reaper Flag, the Inevitable Reaper Sail, and the Mercenary Head Figure for taking part in Duke Slayer's challenges. Interesting. Now, in terms of game balancing, these are some of the updates that they've done to the balance out the game. So, Hunter's Call has, will now be war, war player. Uh, war, war players with greater gold and reputation for uh, cashing in fish and meat. Good to hear. Um, the Tall Tale Skull World's balancing um, Captain Bligsy, Captain Graymore, and uh, the Gold Ho Hoarder will now have a more balanced occur for two and three person clues. It was interesting. The Shores of Gold Gold Hoarder occur. Uh, Okay, so for those who those who are playing in the final occur, they will be given a little bit more time. That's good to hear. Uh, okay, hey, so, um, sh oh, uh, shipwreck rewards. Uh, now you can find gunpowder. Pe Gunpowder kegs, resource crates, and even memory gems in addition to all the previously found rewards. That's good. Um, and this is a big one that me and Law have been begging, begging, and I mean literally begging there to finally change. Seriously, guys, what took you so long? Uh, they finally improved the, the improving the mermaid's return to ship. The memories are more helpful, and they are going to appear much more quickly. <sighs> I'm not going to yell at you too much, Rhea, but seriously, you should have adjusted this but this, this by the anniversary update. You feel if, uh, this feels kind of late. Not going to lie. But I'll take it. I'll take it now. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is the second biggest one. 
Now, as you guys know, Megalodons can be a bit of an annoyance out on sea. See, see, and since the, ever since, since um, a couple updates ago, they added more different types of Megalodons instead of just one, which makes it even more annoying. <laughs> Uh, and since they all attack differently, it's hard, hard to figure out who's who. Uh, so, uh, what they've done is they've done a wide bouncing pass on the Megalodon occurs out in the world. When player occurring the Megalodon, players should be able to clearly more identify the personality from how they act around the ship. And allowing you to strategize how to engage with them. Uh, now, fleeing from the Megalodon... Done. And now, there is a small tip. If you are nearby an island, island on a treasure hunt, I don't care what you're doing, this is a tip for both me and Lola, head to an island. 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 It's because the Megalodons don't like what getting washed up on shore. Sure, they will leave you alone. Alone. But there were some times that, even if you did, they would wait out at sea until you left. Left. But, uh... Uh, uh, but now that she will quickly give up instead. Instead. And clues on sloops and brigantines were now more, much more likely to occur, uh, more balanced in the balanced occurrence, while still providing a challenge to be taken down. Um, this makes it easier for me and Lola because we usually use the sloop obligatine when we go out on sea. See, unless we have more than one person with us. Uh, uh, so, thank you, man, for finally listening. Listening, that was much needed. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, the mass dam damage, you guys knew about that. Um, escaping the skeleton ship is also another one, one that's also very important. When chasing an uh, eggnog skeleton ship, crews will no longer need to put as much difference difference between them them before the skeleton ship decides to let you escape. Good. <laughs> that, that's good to hear. Skeletons on islands are less accurate with cannons and take longer to return after being killed. Really? Really? That was needed though. 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 As you guys probably know, skeletons can fire if an island does have a cannon to board, but uh, I'm usually good at steering around those, those at sea. That's one thing I am good when I'm steering my ship. I know, know when to stay far away from my cannon shot. I rarely get hit, honestly. Honestly, on the side. Side, side when it comes to those, unless I'm, way, unless I'm way closer to the island, so. I'm very good at keeping a, a, a distance. But, it's good to hear that they're working on that. Um, now more peak outposts. Uh, Moore's Peak is the only outpost in the Devil's War. For the time being. Uh, but now, it w the geysers on Moore's Post will sprout less. In addition, the Devil's War volcanoes in general, it will not hit ships, uh, ships uh, often. Often. Now, you may think the Devil's Post, by the way, does not have a volcano. But it does. It does. Uh, you just probably have... Uh, I've either been lucky, lucky enough, ninety-nine percent of the time, to not have occurred it, or, or when it has happened, you're not on the island. So yeah. Now accessibility updates. Uh, now there's a tab to interact. Interact. Uh, uh, interact. Uh, support. But these are the accessibility improvements. Uh, now they only require a single tap instead of, you know, holding to interact. Uh, about time. Time. Like I said, I will show you how to occur all this um, in a guide later. Later. Uh, for the keyboard stuff though, I'll have to have Lola do because I do not have a keyboard that currently will work, work with my Xbox One. So, yeah, that's on her, but... I can show you show you this stuff. Uh, that is if the patch is out already. Um, also, uh, there's also been stuff added to the menus that have the dials, like the weapons and um, uh, the items, items and such. 
such. Uh, they've added toggle. You only need, need to, you can open the menus with just two button taps. So one for open and one for close. And then sticky allows you to um, open uh, the me menus and have it stay open even if you don't touch the analog stick. Stick after that, so that's good. Then they have the deal uh, menu support for key bindings, which is a good thing. So again, I'll have Lola show you that. Um, then they have support for mouse hover. That's good. 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 Obviously, this doesn't help over the controller. Okay, now we come into some other much needed stuff. Joy, uh, uh, the notifications now when a person play when a player joins or leaves your clue. For those who don't know, no, that was previously not the case, but this is a big improvement. Me and Lola are actually needing this one too because she, when it comes to interacting with she and I, with, with her and I, when we're trying to get into see if these, these because why well, internet is better, it gets, uh, her computer can still be a little. Fussy, to say the least. <laughs> so, this leaves me me and her having to wait, wait until we're both in game, and I don't hear no until I hear a mic, so. Oh, this is actually a much needed improvement. This will help me and Laura know for sure when she is joining my crew. Ooh, so that's good to hear. Um... Um, there have been some new puzzles added to the Shrouded Breaker, Chris Leach, and the Revenge of the Morning Star. Uh, and Blixie, Ixie fight locations have also been added to the Chris Leach Tall Tale. So, yeah. Now you can actually dig up bait, uh, eight on islands, which is pretty cool. Now the interactive hatches. That's pretty interesting. And of course, there's some edit stuff too, like Outpost. Uh, Outpost uh, uh, audio has been approved. Um, audio during pilot selection has also been approved. Um, um, there's now a UI setup panel that shows you what you chose as well, so that's good. And they've improved the keyboard and uh, controller screens in the settings menu, so that's good. All right, now these are just in general updates, dates and fixed issues. So I'm just gonna uh, let you guys look at these for a little bit. You can pause the video even if you want to, but I'm gonna stay on these uh, for just a couple sec, uh, for about 30 seconds or even less, so you guys can see. But like I said, you can go to the website yourself to read all these, or you can look into the pa or you can pause the video, uh, and uh, yeah.
All right, and these are the last of the known issues. Issues? Seems like they tackled a whole bunch of them, but, bunch of them, but there's still two that they have here, so... Yeah, and now for the download size. Uh, so for those who own an Xbox One or Xbox Slim, uh, Xbox One Slim, like me, uh, the update's a little bit bigger on our side. It's 6.4 gigabytes, so make sure you have a little bit more space. Hopefully those Xbox Game Pass games has, haven't been taking up too much space on your Xbox. <laughs> For Windows fans and Xbox One X users, it's actually a bit smaller, 5.50 50 gigabytes. So, yeah, a little bit small for you guys. Still pretty large, though. Uh, so, yeah, that's all for now. Okay, so that was today's Afiva's Tavern. Uh, sorry for the long video, guys, but <laughs> uh, there was a lot to cover in this update. Like I said, we're going to try to do as many monthly updates as we can. Can we will be doing these of Thieves Taverns as always each week to see if there's anything new with Sea of Thieves. Um, uh, and these are new patch notes. As we, as you probably already know, you can also keep an eye on new stuff coming to Sea of Thieves by joining uh, uh, Sea of Thieves inside this program. But you must have a copy of Sea of Thieves, whether it's through Game Pass or physical or digital. So, yeah, if you want to join the board, Go right ahead, but I must remind you, it's an NDA. Hey, so, hush, hush, hush. That means not even making a YouTube video on it. Yeah, I know, I know the temptation's hard, hard to share the information with everybody, but it's not a very wise idea to talk about, about it, about it, because I'm pretty sure Microsoft... I'll pass the wall of eating and kicked out see if he's permanently, or for sure, sure if you did it repeated times, 100% banning you from Xbox Online services. Yeah, not a good look. So, obey the rules, okay? <laughs> it, it helps all of us. Alright, that's all for now, guys. I, this is yours truly, uh, DJ Music Clues out, and, well, as Joe said, see you on the seas!